Somebody asked me if we were doing anything special for Easter. I said, yes, celebrating the resurrection. <laughs> Can we do a 6 o'clock morning service? Oh, if that's the Lord, tell Him I'm on it. <laughs> I, I am on it. Some talked about an early morning service. Some talked about a sunrise service. Um, nobody's mentioned anything, so I guess we're just going to be here. How many would come to a sunrise service? Wow. <whistles> All right, stand by your telephones. We're going to do a sunrise, but it's going to be sunrise, not 6 o'clock. Okay, it's going to be sunrise. So we'll check and see what time the sun's coming over the trees. And that's when we'll schedule it. I'll call you on the phone. I'll let you know when it's going to be, okay? You got your hands up. You better be here. And we'll, get her, we'll get her done. We will get her done. And there will be coffee available. And Yeah, yeah, there will. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Good morning to all. In the, uh, in the words of Apostle Paul, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Peace be unto you. You know, he's, he's so gracious with the peace of the Lord, isn't he? You know, he said, he, he's not like, I give you peace. No, I, 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 I offer you the peace of the Lord. If you come into it and receive it, it's yours. If you don't, you ain't going to get it. But it's an invitation to us all this morning. Amen? Man, it is. Last week we began to take a look at worship, um, and, and, and I said that, that each of us, each of us has within ourselves, within our, our hearts, we have a mental picture of what we see worship to be. It, it, it stems from the where, where you grew up, maybe the church you went to as a kid, uh, maybe the church you went to last week and you're making comparisons. I don't know, but each of us has within us a vision of what we think worship is. And, and we do. It's, it's a fact, depending, depending on those things. I spoke about those differences and how some would find no greater, no greater praise, no greater worship than, than when just sitting and listening to that tabernacle choir. Who can they get it done? I'm telling you, and they lift voices. I talked about how some people just enjoy the simplicity of voices raised in harmony. Have you ever been to one of those? Where, I mean, the brethren do that. And, and they, they blend their voice. I don't know how they do it. Man. I'll tell you what. And, and it's just a choir of harmony. Lifted to the, and it, it's got such intrinsic richness and value. And worship in it. See, there, there's there's all kinds of ways. Um, others others uh, others have their spirits so filled and lifted that they they gotta move. They they just gotta move. They they gotta jump. They gotta they gotta run around the congregation and 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 shout and hallelujah and amen and it's from their heart. It's from a heart of worship. And, and you got to move. For some people, it's just, ooh, we're doing this. This. And the guy that's standing behind you is going, ooh, you're getting seasick. There's some just want to sit and listen, and meditate in their heart as they hear the, the music and, and the words, and they're listening to the words of, of what's being sung and, and taking it deep within themselves. And they're, they're happy to, to just sit and to listen, to worship. Listen, <clears throat> we can't judge those who are sitting in a congregation of worship. If you're judging them, they're probably deeper in worship than you are. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt. I remember saying that worship could be all of that. 
And when I closed last week, I asked if we could make a concerted effort this past week to be conscious of our worship in the moment throughout the days when we were working, when we were cooking, when we were about our daily lives, to stop within those moments and check in with ourselves. Am I doing this unto the Lord? It is, is, I'm cleaning the toilet. Am I cleaning it as unto the Lord? I'm, I'm, I'm tearing bushes out of my front yard. Am I tearing them out in the presence of God? You know, is what I'm doing in this moment worship to God? If I'm in my office, I'm on the phone, I'm doing business, am I doing it as unto the Lord? How many did that? How many were conscious of that? Just a few of you. I'm telling you, there's rich, I don't just spit this stuff over the pulpit. I don't just throw this out there. Hey, here's a good idea. I really believe that's from the Lord. I really believe that we need to walk in the richness of worship in all that we do. And check in with ourselves throughout the day. I'm talking to the cash register at, at, at Taco Bell. Am I talking like someone who's been in the presence of God? Or am I talking like someone who demands to be served? When a waitress comes to me in the restaurant, am I griping, complaining that the water glass was wet, really? I mean, what is it with these people? Or am I in there with my heart toward God? And not only, not only in His presence, but is what I'm about to receive, this meal that this waitress is bringing me. Am I blessing it? Am I thinking, oh, thank you, Jesus. And if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have a dime to spend on what I am about to consume. See, where are we in that? And so when I asked you that last week, it wasn't just about blah, 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 blah. I really mean it. So try it again this week. See if you can't make it work. See if you can't make it work. In, in my, my actions, in, in what I'm saying. Because we who are created, and I said this, listen to this. We who are created to worship must determine the direction and the purpose of our worship. What are we worshiping? When are we worshiping? Who are we worshiping? And be conscious of those things in our lives. So, today, we're going to dig a little deeper. How do we worship? What kind of worship pleases God? What's God got to say about it? Amen? Are you ready? Are you ready? Those of you online, get, get ready. Get ready. Because here we go. First of all, as I've already said, true, true and real worship comes from the heart. We good with that? It comes from here. If it ain't here, it ain't going there. It comes from the heart. It's not the sitting. It's not the meditating. It's not the jumping. It's not the running around. It's not the shouting that impresses Father God. It's your heart. He's listening to your heart. We should be able to sing happy birthday to you and he hear our heart. It's inside of us. It's the person God created who, who he knit in our mother's womb. That's the person God is listening for. It's in our, it's in our heart. It's the heart of worship that pleases God. You remember the, women, the woman at the well in Samaria? Some, some of you do. Do um, you remember what, what she said? She said to him, Sir, Jesus, sir, I perceive it seems like you as a prophet. I perceive. Wow. Oh, mm, you must be a prophet. She said, our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews say 
that Jerusalem is, Jerusalem is the place that we're to worship. It's like, come on. So what? The only place we can worship is in Jerusalem? What did Jesus say? Let's go there. Go to, go to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Open your Bibles. John chapter 4. Verse 19. Chapter 4, verse 19. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. This is what Jesus said to her. Woman, I believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But listen, the hour is coming, now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. So what does all that mean to you and I? What sense can we make of it? Well, it, it's just that. It's what he said it was. God doesn't care what, where our worship comes from. He doesn't care what we're wearing. He's not impressed by your, your beautiful new Easter dress and, and, and fluffy garments. He's not interested in your cool-looking leather vest. He's not interested in those things. He's listening to what? Your heart. Because I don't care if you come to church in your pajamas and sweats. You're going to look dumb, but you can worship me. God says it's okay. If somebody walked in in their PJs and wanted to sit in a, sit in a church, it's fine. We can't judge that. God is listening. And trust me, He hears our heart. The good and the bad. The righteous and the unrighteous thoughts. He hears. What's He hearing? Doesn't care what kind of building we're in. God isn't fooled by any of that stuff. He's not fooled by marble monuments, pillars of stone, grand chandeliers hanging from the ceiling. Totally unimpressed. Totally unimpressed. If His presence isn't welcome there, if He doesn't hear hearts that yearn for His presence, just walk on by. Wait on the corner. Might get to you later. We could be on the, on the worship team. We could be on the worship team. We could sing songs, the, wor the, the words of the songs. We can give testimony. We can be the guy that sets up the chairs, the guy that mows the lawn, the guy that, that cleans the toilets. We can be all of those things. But if we aren't worshiping God in any of that, it is no sacrifice unto Him. It is none. Any of, if any of that is not a sacrifice in our heart, he, then we're just jumping through hoops. We're just doing good stuff. And come on, there's a room full of good hearts. We can do some pretty neat stuff. Good stuff. But if it's not done as a sacrifice unto the Lord, our job, if we're not doing our job as unto the Lord, then we collect nothing from it but our paycheck. But we're losing, we're missing out on the blessings of heaven that can pour in on the wisdom. Of, wouldn't you like to do your job with the wisdom of God? Foresee that which is coming, not have to react to that which came? Wouldn't that be novel? 
to be empowered in our, in our job, in our lives. Listening to our hearts. Man, we better smarten up to this. I'm telling you, we better smarten up. Because He is listening. He's listening to you right now. Don't you be thinking that about me. He's listening. He's listening to you. God wants the real deal. He wants the genuine worshiper. Isaiah chapter 29. Oh, he says this. You got that up? Isaiah 29, 13. He, he says, he says, it's not up. He, there we are. There we are. Woo. Woo. He says, these people come near me with their mouth, and they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Wow. Think that one over. They talk a good talk. They're in church every Sunday. Out being, a, out being a, the lovely little Christian. But their hearts are not in it. Wow, pastor, that's pretty sobering. That's what I thought. That's what I thought when he sent me back there. I went, ooh. Hello. Wake up, O oh children. That, that may seem hard, but God wants to hear from our hearts in spirit and in truth. He hears the real you. We're not hiding anything. He hears the real you. If He doesn't have our heart, then none of the carpet cleaning, the hugging, the dancing, the hallelujahs, the singing, the shouting, none of it matters. Wow, Pastor, you're mad. I'm not mad. I'm just impassioned here. God really wants us to see something. So what do I do if I find myself there? If I find myself giving hugs and smiling, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not engaged with God. I mean, the words of the songs are coming out of my mouth, but they're not from the overflow of my heart, right? I'm just singing, wow, that's a really cool song. Wow, the way they ended that. Who sent you? Goosebumps. Holy ghost bumps I got all over me. The words are coming out of my mouth, but I haven't entered into them. What do I do if I find myself there? The, 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 the overflow of my heart is just not there in the middle of that. What do I do? Well, gee whiz, don't wait till 10.30 Sunday morning to get started. Don't wait till 10.30 Sunday morning to make yourself ready to worship. Spend the morning before you go out on any day and take time to prepare your heart. You wake up in the morning, Lord, this day that you have given me, wow, I'm sucking, I'm breathing, I'm, I am alive. May I offer you my heart this day, all day. Use me as you will. Burn me up. This might be my last day. Use me up. I want nothing but smoke at the end. We've got an opportunity that morning. Even Sunday morning, got an opportunity to get up 10 minutes earlier and make a living sacrifice unto God. This is my body. This is my heart. My soul is yours. Use me in whatever way. You will. You got it. Whatever I am, you got. On Sunday, I know we can get in a little bit of a traditional rut. I get that. There are some folks who choose to miss the first few songs. So that they can come in and, and just hear the sermon or hear the last song in the sermon or, or maybe hear half of the sermon or or come for the music, but not the sermon. And we have an opening song. We have announcements. We got we got one or two joyous celebratory songs, and then some deeper, more thoughtful worship songs. But listen, it's that way for a reason. See, God is the one who who is a God of order, and so we order 
We order this service to honor Him. Now we are also spirit-filled beings and everything is subject to change. But we must have order. So that's why we have it that way. But that order is sometimes abused by a heart that is not interested in it. Think about these things. We don't think about them often enough. We don't think about them often enough at all. See, it's, it's designed like that to progress. So that there are steps for us to take as we enter in. So we're so much farther ahead if we prepared to enter. That our, the smile doesn't come on our face when we drive through the gate. You know, a mile up the road, it was <clears throat> drive through the gates like, hello. Oh, God is so good. Fifteen minutes ago, I was thinking of murder, but today it's good. Right now, we're, it's so good. Sometimes we need a little help. A little help to get through the bitter thoughts. A little help to get through the recent quarrels. A little help to get through the weight of the day. Chuck off junk that's holding us back, keeping us from, from opening up. Offering our hearts truly to God. You don't... It, Lighten up. You know, loosen up. Either, either He is Lord of our lives or He's not. And, and, and our, our countenance can be a dead giveaway. But we've, we've got to, to lighten our hearts. Let joy flood our hearts. As the psalm was speaking this morning, I read that psalm. Let the joy in our hearts rise up. God, get rid of all that junk. It, it, it. What's that song? You know, um, swing wide, swing wide, swing wide, you heavenly gates. You know, make way. Yeah, make way for the risen. That's 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 these gates. You know, swing wide, swing wide, and make way for the coming King. That's it right there. Get our minds off our bills. Get our minds off what our spouse said 20 minutes ago. You know, sometimes it, it takes a lot of effort to get into the, to, the, to the let God, go God, move. To get that in your heart and, and become ready. Sometimes it takes effort. You know what I'm talking about? There's, there's some folks just beginning to settle in now. Yeah, they're just starting to go, hmm, okay, the peace just dropped. You know, why did it take so long? So don't wait till you get into the church parking lot to put a smile on your face. Ten minutes early, just talk, talking to Holy Spirit and saying, let's go. I want to rip it on today. Use me, burn me, smoke me, do whatever you want to me. People are going to be so blessed to be with me today. I got Jesus on me and I'm going to give him some. I am going to get it on him. Out of my belly flow rivers. <laughs> a little bit here, a little bit there. And God makes us little butterflies. We just go from flower to flower. Little nectar here, little nectar there. That that's that's from the heart. You might even start Saturday. Shoot, start Monday. Let it let it roll. Let it roll. Whatever it takes. I don't think we can imagine. I don't think we can imagine what that kind of preparation would do to transform our Sunday morning. 
I can't, I, it's off the charts. It's off the charts what Sunday morning would be like if we could actually get into that mode. Wow. Is there hardness in our hearts? We confess it. Is there sin in your life? Repent of it. God made it easy. He not, God not only made the way, He said, there's the way. Walk in it. I mean, how plain can it get? He's good that way. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 23. Listen to what He said. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, your worship, your heart, your praise, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Now i got to admit, I've never seen anybody entering into worship, leaving, getting in their car, and coming back. And yet that's what Jesus tells us that we should do. If we've got aught with a brother or a brother that's in offense, he said, take care of that. Take care of that. I want to hear your heart and I want to know your spirit, but it's being blocked. It's being dirtied. It's being stained by what's in it. So get it out. Get rid of it and then come worship me. I want all of you. I want you. I want all of you. The Message Bible says like this, this is how I want you to conduct yourself in these matters. If you enter your place of worship and about to make an offering, you suddenly remember a grudge that a friend has against you. Abandon your offering and leave immediately. Go to this friend, make things right, and then, and only then, come back and work things out with God. Pretty straightforward, huh? Well, nobody's leaving. Dead giveaway, huh? I gotta go. So take care of it. Get it out of the way before you come to me. God first. We gotta be good with that. There's no second place for God in our worship. God is first. Always. And if we keep Him there, we will be the better Christian for it. God is first. We can, we can focus on the song. Oh, it's contemporary. You know, I don't like this contemporary music. It's, oh, it's an old hymn. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, kids are going, what is this? I can't worship to this song. I've never heard it before. What are, what are they doing singing songs I don't know? I mean, come on. You didn't know happy birthday till you was old enough to figure out what was going on. Woo! Listen, we can focus on the music, we can listen to the lyrics, we can yield our emotions to Father God. He wants our mind and He wants our body. He wants, he wants all of us. Yes, indeed. He wants it all. God wants... All of me. Why not take all of me? Can't you see that I'm no good without? The guy thought he was writing a love song. He was to God. Romans 12, 1 and 2. We're getting somewhere. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you. I urge you. I desire for you. I want you to own this. I beseech you. Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this world, but what? Be transformed 
by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Is that good? Romans 12, 1 and 2. And I know I've got to wrap this up somehow, so, so let me ask, why? why? Why worship at all? Why don't we just come in and, and have some music playing and have the word shared and we can go get cookies and coffee and move on? Why, why worship? Why worship at all? Here's a couple reasons. First and foremost, God our Father both commands and invites worship. He both commands and invites worship because he knows. He knows what worship has been designed to accomplish in us. We're not just putting something out there that has no, no return. And he knows what worship can accomplish. The good, the blessing that comes through our hearts of worship. He knows that it encourages our heart. He knows that it enlarges our soul. He knows that it brings healing to our bodies. You know that people are healed during worship? Do you know that, that, that disease and, and, and issues of the, of the body are broken in worship? You, we have no idea how much we have been saved from. How many times we didn't get the COVID, we didn't get the flu, we didn't get a common cold, we didn't get measles, we didn't get mumps. We'd, how many things bypassed us, went around us because of where we were? Because if God is for you, who can be against you? How, how much have we... See, we think our, our salvation is like we save our our soul from hell, right? And, and so I'm not going to burn up at the end times and stuff. We don't understand. The Bible says that we draw from the wells of salvation. Not the well of salvation. The wells of salvation. That means there are many places for us to drink from. We can drink from a well of healing. We can drink from a well of wisdom, from a well of discernment. We can drink from a well of talent. We can drink from a well of worship. We can drink from wells of salvation that are available to us, but we don't even know they exist. Just thinking salvation, saved, we're done. And yet he tells us there's so much portion I did, I did a sermon, I should do this sermon again. I did a sermon one time of being at the beach. And, and, I, and we were walking along the beach, and in this, this little pool was this little guy living in there. And, and the water would come in, and he'd go, and, he, and then the water would go out, he'd go, and then later the water would come in, and he'd go, and he's living in this little pool, and I'm looking at him, and I looked over the boulder into this ocean. And this is what the Lord spoke to my heart. That little guy has no idea of his supply. He's living in this little pool, and he has no idea what's available to him. And yet I, and yet I feed him, and it comes to him daily. Is that us? See, we, can we imagine the supply, the broadness of what God has for you and me? We're walking. We're, we're, sometimes we're walking in such narrowness, such confinement. And God is just saying, kick your door open. Come on. Rise up. Saints of God. Become the men and women that I've called you to be. Come to me. Open your heart to me. You're not embarrassed before me. I knew you before you were born. You're not my embarrassment. You're my greatest creation. Open up your heart to me. Let me do in your life. Let me bring into your life all of the possibilities that I have for you. Go!
I was going to wrap this up. It's the connecting of our heart that turns the table. Remember, it's spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. When we will not open up our lives, our hearts, our souls to Him, there is no truth. We're lying. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Love you, Jesus. <laughs> if it wasn't true, it wouldn't be funny. Because we who are created to worship must determine the direction and the purpose of our worship. Again, we become. We become our worship. When we become our worship, we transform. We transform. And pretty soon, the person who's standing there worshiping God has become something completely different than what he was has been transformed into a worshiping powerhouse of God, open to all of the possibilities of God, open to healing, open to wisdom, drawing in that moment from all of the wells of salvation, we should be overwhelmed by what we receive when our hearts are opened in spirit and in truth. Come on, that is something worth fighting for. That is something worth living for. That is something that's worth going out of your way for. If we turn our hearts to Jesus Christ, if we have you guys up here for me, please. If we can turn our hearts to, to Jesus Christ, we will become like Jesus. You are what you eat. You are what you eat. So what you eating? Are you devouring the Word of God? Are you bringing the Word of God into your life? Because you will begin to emulate who you worship. You will become that. His character, His values, His wisdom, His power. We will not only receive all of that, but we become all of that. Look at 2 Corinthians 3.18. We all. But we all. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, I'll give you a moment to get there. This is a great nutshell right here. 2 Corinthians 3.18, but we all, he says, with unveiled face, that means nothing. Nothing hiding us. That means, that means who we are can be clearly seen. There is no, no veil. There is no hiding. Unveiled. Who we, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed. That's you and me. That's you and me. But we must be unveiled. Oh, come on, somebody say amen. amen. That's a really good place, man. We must be unveiled, not hiding anything. God can see us completely and holy, and our, our hearts are open to Him. We must be unveiled. With unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into what? The same image. Oh, come on, man, that's good. <laughs> being transformed into the same image. I'll try that over here. We've got to get you. Being transformed into the same image. Yeah. <laughs> From glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Whew. Mercy. 
The more we worship Father God, the more we worship the Son, the more we worship Holy Spirit, the more we lift Him up and exalt Him, the more we sing His praises, the more we testify of Him, the more that we're going to start looking like Him. The more that we're going to look like Him. So in all of this that I've shared with you, listen, it boils down to this. Well, if it boiled down to that, why didn't you just give us that? (laughs) Well, because there's richness that happens when you cook, right? I mean, the sauces have to simmer and, you know, the ingredients need to be layered. We got here. We got here. (laughs) It really is this simple. And, and, uh, And it's a question that we've got to seek for ourselves because, listen, your spouse can't, can't, can't answer it for you. Nobody can answer it for you. It's for us alone. Do you want to be like Jesus? Be careful with that one. See, do you really want to be like Jesus? Do you want to be like Jesus? Question number two. Do you want the shalom, the peace of Christ, to reign in your life? Questions. You have to answer that. Do you want His peace? His wisdom, His joy, His power in your life right now. Do you want that? It, it's available. Do you want that? You've got to answer that question. Do you really want a relationship with God the Father like Jesus had? Those are, those are, those are hard questions. Those are hard questions because they require something of us. They ask something of us. Here's the answer to all of that. You've been waiting so patiently for this. This is the answer to all of it. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. Would you start for me, please? And if you stand with me, let's just sing our way out of this thing. We'll We'll try to worship a little bit. Before we get out of here, turn your eyes upon Jesus.
for more than conquerors we are. Sing it Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonder. shall not fail us his word shall not fail you he promised believe him and all will be well then go to a world that is dying his perfect salvation to tell. things of earth and the things of earth will grow strangely in the light of his glory and grace Father we thank you this morning for your sweet sweet presence Father we dedicate ourselves to you this day. Father, receive our hearts as they are. And Father, to help us, help us to make any changes that need to take place within our lives, Lord God, so that we can be those more open saints to you. Help us to open our hearts in ways that we haven't as yet, to take care of those things that, that quench our spirit, those things that hold us back, attitudes, impressions, lies of the devil, Lord, all of those things that seek only to suppress your worship. Satan does not want you worshipped. Well, we are going to deny him that, and we are going to worship your name. Amen. And we do so in the richness and the power and the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Go and be fruitful. Multiply in the name of Jesus. Give somebody some sugar before you get out of here and have an awesome day in the Lord. Dedicate your next week to Him. In Jesus' name, Helen.